blogging. We encourage you, number one, to blog for a, for a couple of different reasons. And many of you have blogs on your website, but you are not actively blogging. But what do I mean by actively blogging? It doesn't mean you have to do a blog every week. The, you know, there are professional bloggers out there and they will blog daily, they will blog weekly. That's not necessarily what you as, a, uh, as an electrician, as a tradesperson needs to be doing. Uh, for you, blogging is all about, and, and here's why we bother blogging, yeah? Blogging is all about two main things. That's all we are interested in. Um, there is a third. We, we, can talk, we can talk about a third, but in the main, for us as tradespeople, blogging is about two things. The first thing it's about is positioning yourself. And by positioning yourself, what we're talking about in this sense, and I'm not talking about positioning yourself up the ranking, that's a different thing, we'll talk about that in a second. What we're talking about is positioning you locally as an expert in what you do. This is part of the premise, the underlying premise of the toolbox is about positioning. When you position yourself properly, you can charge the rates that you want. You know, I, I get asked questions from time to time about why people don't accept my quotes. How come I, I can go out and I can do 20 quotes in a week but only get one job out of it? The, these are some of the type of questions that I can get, I can get asked. Um, and part of the answer to that, part of the answer to that is positioning. You know, when somebody comes back to you and says, oh, uh, this guy came in a little bit cheaper, so we're going with him. It's not always about the price. It's about positioning. If you haven't positioned yourself properly, then price becomes the issue. Hopefully this is making sense. I want to see some thumbs if this is making sense. If you position yourself as the expert, as the go-to person, then price is a consideration, but it is not the issue. And this is the underlying premise of what we do inside the toolbox. It's about positioning you as an expert locally so that people in your area see you as the solution to whatever the problem it is that they have or that you provide. And when you position yourself like that, then price does not it doesn't factor in terms of the actual decision. It may be a consideration, but it doesn't factor as far as the decision is made because they have to have you. You know, if I'm positioned as the guy, the guy for rewiring houses in my area, I'm the go-to guy, then they have to have me. They may be concerned about the price. They may have to save up a little bit. They may have to wait a little longer. They may have to try and negotiate with me, but I'm the one that they want because I've positioned myself that way. This is the underlying premise of what we're doing in the toolbox. Blogging is one way of achieving that. We look at, in the toolbox, you look at most of what we look at, you know, the help sheets are about positioning yourself. Video is about positioning yourself. Your website is about positioning yourself. Your Facebook page is about positioning yourself. There are a number of different ways that we do it. So blogging is one of those things. So anybody who goes, oh, well, I'm going to do the leaflets. Leaflets are advertising. Leaflets aren't about positioning. I'm going to do the leaflets, but I'm not going to bother about the blogging. Yeah. Or I'm going to do the magazine advertisement, but I'm not going to do the blogging. I'm not going to do the video. I'm not, I'm not going to do... These positioning pieces are what make the other stuff work. Now, the other stuff work, will work for a short period of time. You know, anybody can go out with a handful of leaflets, target the right people, go to the right areas and get responses from it. But if you want that response to be ongoing, if you want that response to be continuous, then you need to have substance behind that. Where when people find you, when they recognize who you are, they then recognize the expert that you are. And you do that through all of your positioning pieces. So if you're going to just do one thing and not do the others, it will work for a period of time. If you want to get lasting results, if you want to get it uh, really working for you, if you want to get you know continuous work and streams of people uh, contacting you and converting into business, then you need to do these positioning pieces as well. And blogging is just one of them. When you're blogging, you need to be, you need to be, 
positioning yourself to show people that you are the solution. So, so just writing blogs for the sake of writing blogs is not what you're doing. You need to write blogs that show people how you solve the problem that you solve. You need to talk to your ideal customer. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So that's one of the main reasons why we actually blog. It's, it's in my view, the main reason. Think about it. How many other tradesmen in your area are genuinely and seriously blogging and providing content and information for their customers? Not too many. You know, and again, it's part of the whole sequence. It's not just a matter of writing a blog and putting it on your site. You can't just assume because you've put a blog on your site that people are going to read it. That doesn't happen. You've got to run traffic to it. You've got to drive traffic to it. And how do we do that? We, we can send traffic to a blog in a number of different ways. We can uh, send out emails to our list. If we've got a list of two, three, four thousand people, we send an email to our list asking or requesting that they go and visit our latest blog. Or we provide them with a tidbit of information in, in the um, email. Did I say leaflet? Caught myself there. Did I say email what I meant? Uh, but you send out an email and a little tidbit of information in the email but then it drives them to actually read read the blog you can run facebook posts you can do boosted posts you can do facebook ads and run these things to your uh your blog this is how we get people to to read the blog and this is how we end up positioning ourselves so positioning is one of the things that we need to do the, the other reason that we're doing blogging is for seo value search engine optimization value we were blogging in order to help our website get ranked because when google likes your when google likes your website it will rank you higher when people search under the terms that that you are ranking for and we'll talk about what you should be doing as far as that is concerned in just a moment but that's another reason why we blog it's not all about giving the information that's a big part of it it's also about making sure that the site ranks and comes up higher on the on the listings. Those are the two main reasons why you blog. Now, there is a third. Um, it's a lesser reason as far as I am concerned, but it might be an interesting reason for some of you. Anybody want to know what the third one is? Third. Oh, yeah, that's, that's why it was the third reason, wasn't it? The third reason why um, people will blog is because you can monetize your blogs you can actually earn money from writing a blog now how does that work simply you become an affiliate and there are a number of organizations that run affiliate programs for example i believe they used to i believe they still do for example um and using an industry specific one here tlc uh, those of you who are, are tlc uh, users will probably be aware that they have a big online store and you can become a an affiliate to that. So, for example, as an affiliate with TLC, you can do the same with B&Q. You can do the same with Wix. Uh, I believe you can do the same with Screwfix. When you become an affiliate, you can, in essence, sell their products and take a commission for selling the products. They set the prices and so on and so forth. So, for example, you could do a blog on, say, I don't know, USB sockets and having them changed and, and altered in your home. Uh, and in that blog, you could do a link to TLC where they can buy the socket from. It's your affiliate link and you will make a commission on the sale of that socket. So there's another reason why you could or should blog because you can monetize them and have a second stream, another stream of income. Now, if any of you have listened to uh, Jesson and some of the work that Jesson does, he talks about having multiple streams of income. And of course, some people go off on tangents on building different businesses. And everything. You don't have to build different businesses. You can have a stream of income from your existing business. You know, an, an additional stream of income in our case could be something like the, uh, the ice plan. Same business, but additional stream of income. Same thing with affiliate marketing. You don't have to do something completely different. You're in an industry where you have access to people who may be interested in buying certain products. Uh, you can have those linked as affiliate links on your blogs. Uh, I'm not saying make it a main part of your business, but you know some people do. Some people blog professionally. They will write blogs and all they're doing is selling affiliate products from those blogs. But hey, that's, uh, that's what they want to do. 
so that's another reason. Those are three, th three things you can do about three reasons why you want to blog. You uh, position yourself as an expert, number one. You increase your SEO ranking, number two. And you could potentially monetize your blogs to earn some uh, extra wonga from them. Okay, so that is, uh, that is uh, why you should be blogging right. What do you need to do? First of all, you need to get prepared, don't you? You need to uh, prepare yourself when you're blogging. Like any kind of marketing activity that you do, there is preparation behind it. You don't just sit down at the keyboard and say, oh, right, I'm going to write a blog about what you've wanted to first of all and again you'll see a lot of this goes back to foundational stuff within the toolbox and the foundational stuff we're talking about in this instance is know your audience it is pointless writing blogs to every man and his dog or hoping to attract every man and his dog know your ideal customer when you know your ideal customer and you write a blog, the very same as when you write any marketing piece, any advertising piece, when you know your ideal customer and you're writing a blog, you know what pain points to hit on. You know what terminology to use. You know what will excite them and you will know what will upset them. So you can write a blog with your customer in mind. It will make more sense when you're writing to, in my case, if you're writing to Mary, than if I was writing to every woman in the world because I can make my um, my blog more attractive to that individual. So understanding and knowing who your ideal customer is will help you in terms of the way that you formulate and the way that you write a blog. You also then need to have a theme. Now, I don't mean a theme for the individual blog. I'm talking about an overall theme. What is your thing? What is your uh, expertise? What is the, uh, the area that you are most knowledgeable about? That should become your theme. So, for example, if you are a lighting specialist, then the majority of, and not necessarily all of, but the majority of your blogs should be themed around lighting. You know, you may have a blog one week on a uh, different type of lamps. Another week, it might be lighting design. Another week, it might be lighting controls. Another week, it could be energy saving uh, with lighting, well, whatever. But it, you should have a theme that you get recognized for. Very, very closely linked to your positioning and your expertise because you then get recognized as the guy who writes about that topic whatever that topic happens to be so theme your your blogs now you know for example small works as for, you know if, if your if your remit is just small jobs and all you do as far as uh, your electrical business is concerned is small jobs well small works could very well be a theme that you get known for so this week you you would blog on the advantages of having an extra socket in the garden Next week, you would blog on uh, why it would be a good idea to have USB sockets in the children's bedroom. Things, you know, so have a general theme that you become recognized for. Hopefully, this is making sense. Guys, want to see some thumbs and hearts and things going across there. I'm, I'm starting to get bunged up with a cold, I think. Excuse me. Um, so hope, hopefully, that's making sense. Uh, and then you need to create a structure. Now, what you need to structure your blog so that your blog becomes familiar to people. So the very same as when we talk about creating help sheets, there is a look and feel to your help sheet that becomes you. Now, the template if the, is probably the right word to use. Have a template that is yours, that becomes familiar to your customers. So the content will be different. The content uh, of each of your blogs will be different, but the structure how you formulate your blog, how it appears, how it looks, will be familiar to your customer. Very same as when we talk about doing help sheets. If you start off with a main image and then you have body of text and subheadings, have, have that structure consistent on your blogs. Now, the nice thing about this is most pre-built blogging platforms provide you with a basic structure and then you, uh, you, you sort it out yourself from there. Uh, and, and most of your web platforms have a blog 
capability whether you're using it or not sometimes it's just a matter of turning it on and putting that extra tab on your on your website but in in the main most web platforms have blogging capability uh, and have a an inbuilt structure all you need to do is take that and make that make that your own um, so know your audience have a theme that you are known for not just a theme for an individual blog but a theme that you are known for and have a structure that is familiar to your customers guys if there are any questions or, or comments so far pop them in i will be coming to them again in just a moment next thing we need to look at is um making it seo um rich now gary will know a lot more about this than i will and gary is on the call so feel free to jump in when you uh when you can if you wish gary um <clears throat> but making your your blog just sitting down and writing a blog for the sake of blogging is, is great it's going to help positioning and everything but you need to make your blog keyword rich uh how do we do that first and foremost we create a list of keywords that we want to be found for in advance and and you don't do this for every individual blog you create this list once but you attempt to use this list in every blog what do i mean what do i mean the way i describe this when i'm working with the guys in uh, on business builder the way that I, I describe this is create a list of uh there you go john <laughs> There you go. You'll be pleased to know that this this morning, uh, sorry, just spotted John's comment there. Don't see any water. You'll be pleased to know that this this morning, guys, is not coffee. It's green tea. Get the metabolism moving. So we have green tea this morning and we have water here also. But thanks for keeping a check on me, John. I do appreciate it. Um, OK, so I was talking about uh, making your blog SEO rich. When you are um, when you've defined your ideal customer, one of the exercises you should go through is to consider and you know by the way guys ask these questions you know you will have good customers that you will be able to ask these questions of but you can either consider or you can ask the questions if you as a customer sat down today looking for an electrician what would you type into google what would that word be now we can get stuck in our own ideas we start thinking uh, oh uh, electrician and uh, nic and so on and so forth but then we'll get stuck your customer might be thinking something completely different so ask them what are the words if they sat down and wanted to type into google to find they don't know who you are but they want to find an electrician what would they type into google those my friends form your keywords and my belief is that you should have a minimum of 25 keywords that you want to be ranked for and found for on the web now there's going to be the overriding one that you want to get found for and in my view that should be for your area so in my case it was electrician in chatham not a keyword a string yeah uh, same difference um so uh, electrician in chatham was what i wanted to get found for what is it you want to get found for what is it that you want people to find you for? And of course, what you want people, sorry, I'm just going to adjust the camera because I think it's a little bit too high. Uh, the thing is, what you want them to find you for is what your ideal customer is searching for. So create a list of approximately 25 words that you want to get found for. And then you try to use as many of those words in your blog. Now, don't make that complicated by sitting down and thinking, how do I write a blog with all of these words in it? Don't do that. Write your blog and then sit with your list and tick off how many of those are in the blog. And for the ones that are not in the blog, can you substitute out a word or add an additional sentence that will help you to get that word in, but still making sense? It's better if it makes sense in the sentence rather than it's just shoehorned in there. So a list of 25 words that you know you want to get listed for or phrases that you want to get listed for, that you want to get picked up for. Have your blog to one side, write your blog, read through your blog, tick off the words that you've got in there and then have a look through and see where can I move or what can I change to get that word in there? How can I add something to get that word in there? Yeah, these are the kind of things that will help your blog to rank. 
like I said, Gary will know a lot more about this, uh, and I'm sure um, he will he will jump in and and say uh, what he can on this. So that that's keywords and keyword lists, uh, guys. And bear in mind the stuff that I'm talking about as far as SEO is concerned are simple things that you can do yourself. There are guys out there who do you know phenomenal things with SEO. Um, but these are little things that you can do to help yourself before getting help elsewhere. Uh, the next thing is the blog name. Making sure that the name of the blog contains words that you are likely to get searched for. This is important because the blog name will come up quite high in the um, on the page, obviously, top of the page. And it will also have what they call a H1 tag. Now, there's where I sound like I know what I'm talking about, and I do not. But what I do know is that a H1 tag um, will help as far as searching is concerned. So H1 tags are created on main headings in blogs. Uh, and I believe you can control this. Uh, I believe that in certain cases it's automatically set within the blog, but you can actually go in and, and set what are H1 and H2 tags. So H1 tags are your uh, blog name or, or your main headings. Uh, so make sure that your main headings and your yeah, your main headings and your the name of your blog, which is a main heading, um, have searchable terms, terms that you want to get recognized for. Images. Make sure that any images you use are named with the name of a search term that you want to get noticed for. So if, if it's an NIC logo or an Alexa logo or a NAPIT logo, don't just have it labeled as NAPIT, have it uh, labeled as local NAPIT registered or local you know, NIC registered. Uh, have it as a, as a term that one of your customers is more likely to sit down and type in on the image. Make sure when you've uploaded that and it has the, the, the correct name on it, that you also uh, add the alt text uh, to that image. Uh, each image has an alt text. Gary will explain more about what that is. But you have an option to name that as well and make sure that that is named with a searchable term. Uh, the next thing you need to look at is anchor texts. God, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about this morning, doesn't it? Um, anchor texts, very simply guys, don't get hung up on this, but anchor texts are links out to other areas either on your site or away from your site. So for example, if you have a, um, a video that accompanies your blog, if you are uh, blogging, uh, let's, say you're, let's say you're writing a blog about garden lighting. But six months ago, you created a video and you have a video linked on YouTube about garden lighting. Well, you simply can do a link to your video um, from your blog. But when you do that link, you can um, name the link. So make sure that the link is named correctly. Uh, again, there's alt text that you can you can name the link. Uh, and the link will link away to your, your video, which will also help with your ranking as well. Hopefully that's making sense, guys. It's a very basic overview. But these are things that you can control as far as your SEO is concerned. These are things. There's a lot more people can do for SEO. There are SEO experts out there that do stuff that I don't know about. Uh, it can be a little bit like a black art. But there are things you can do to help yourself get your um, get your uh blogs ranked and this is some of the difficulty with using uh, external people who don't know what they're doing so for example a blog developer uh, or sorry not a blog developer a web developer who is only interested in creating the the web uh, and then continuing to use them and paying them the, a service to uh, upload blogs that you provide them with and so on and so forth because all they're going to do is upload the content that you give them when you use an expert who knows about blogging and about SEO, they're going to do it in a way that's going to actually help and affect your ranking. Um, but the more work you can do up front, like preparing your blog and making sure things are ready for it, these are things you can do yourself that will help you. Hopefully that's making sense. Can I just see some thumbs and hearts and things if, if you have learned something from that? I'm going to have a quick look down here uh, for a moment and see 
who's commenting um oh lots coming in there from gary gary i'm not going to read through all of this i'm assuming it's all uh, helpful stuff for the guys that they can use uh to extend on this slightly used list of search terms james has recommended you create pick one as a blog subject da, 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 da. uh right okay uh your blog must read naturally yeah that is important guys and that's why i'm saying create your list of words um and write your blog see where you can fit the words in don't just try and shoehorn the words in it must read logically and make sense otherwise you get penalized by uh by uh google because otherwise people could just write strings of of searchable terms and, and pop them up uh, and i think many years ago people used to uh h1 tags for title or names h2 tags for subheadings correct and h2 uh, h3 we're going through this in a moment gary uh for the body of the text uh okay good stuff Yeah, sorry, just reading down through Gary's post. Excellent, good. Thank you for uh, for uh, your input there, Gary. I appreciate that. Uh, guys, if you have questions or comments, pop them in, because not only am, am I doing the, the content now, but Gary's on here as well. Uh, so if you have any questions or uh, comments, get them in now. Uh, right, okay, so next up. Uh, yeah, this is what Gary was talking about. So headline is your title or... or um, the the headline of your uh blog the name of your blog the title of your blog or any headlines that you have inside there will need to be um h1 tagged you have an opportunity to do what's called a meta description in most blogs as well now the meta description does not um appear as part of the blog but is shown on other sites gary might be able to explain this slightly differently uh, as a brief description when your blog uh, appears. So for example, if somebody was searching on Google for rough terms, uh, like, I don't know, garden lighting, then your blog or the link to your blog and the subject of your blog would appear in the search term, but then a little description, which is the meta description uh, that you want them to read. So it's a tease, a tease into your blog. So you have an opportunity to write a meta description in most blog platforms as well. And that meta description will help people to uh, decide whether to open your blog or not when it's found on a search term. But also it can help with search terms if you get the right keywords in there as well. Gary, correct me if I'm wrong um, or add to it if, if, uh, if you wish. Um, featured images, uh, we've mentioned that. Make sure, you know, in, in this day and age, when I, when I started blogging initially, um, I didn't tend to use a lot of images, but more and more people are less consumed by uh, text and they are more image focused. So, you know, this is why a lot of people are going towards videos. So when you have an opportunity to install a decent related image with your blog, then do so. Now, the image itself shouldn't be uh, overly blatant or descriptive but should have a subtle reference to what it is you're talking about. So for example, if the blog was, and we'll stick with the theme, if the blog was garden lighting, um, then you know a, a real close up of a garden light is not necessarily going to do the job for you, but a very nicely shot picture of a garden lit up at night might do the job. So make sure that the image looks the part because these things will, will help as well. It'll help to encourage people to read but also make sure that it is labeled correctly and the alt tags are done correctly as well. So featured image. Um, the introduction to your, to your blog, again, make sure that your introduction hooks people. Blogs by nature, um, they don't have to be great long volumes that you write, but in most cases they do tend to be. So you need that introduction to hook your people, to hook people to read on further. So, the introduction should give people it's that page turner you know it's that it's that why do i why do i want to read more and that's what it should do so what you need to do in the introduction is you need to again understanding who your ideal customer is you need to make sure that you are teasing those pains that you know they are suffering you need to remind them of the little pains or issues or needs that they have that you're going to solve because you're going to solve them to a sort inside the blog if that makes sense so your introduction needs to be a tease um, and then you you need to have you need to break up 
the um, blog by using subheadings. Break down the blog by using, so it's not just a complete stream of text. You should have your main heading uh, and then you should have subheadings that break down almost like chapters in a book, but each section should be broken down and the section should be short so that it keeps people flowing, flowing through it. And your subheadings need to be tagged with a H2 tag. Um, in the body of the text, the body text is obviously the message that you are delivering and should be tagged with a H3 tag. Uh, to help with your to help with your ranking uh, and inside of any of the body of the text if you can provide data or you can provide graphs or charts that stimulate and keep people interested as well then that's a good thing to do in the blog as well obviously including multimedia we've talked about linking away to your uh, linking away to your your video if you can do that inside of the the blog as well if you have a video that complements your your blog post then use that make sure that you link through to that and th there may be just a tentative link to the video you know it may not be directly related to the blog post uh, and in some cases when i'm working with the business builders what we will talk about is creating six or seven videos and uh, you can link those to every blog so if you had 40 blogs those six or seven videos in somewhere or another will link to each of those so one, one video can be linked to three, four, five, six, eight blogs, depending on the content of the actual video. So in other words, a general video about lighting could link to outside lighting, security lighting, internal lighting, lighting design. Um, so you can make use of multimedia in terms of um, linking it with your blog and helping you with your SEO ranking and helping you to keep it interested uh, for your customer as well. You should have a conclusion to your um, to your blog as well. So your conclusion needs to sort of nicely wrap up what it is that you are actually that you are actually talking about, and it should be based on your opinion. These are the things that make you stand out from your um, from your competition. You know, do not try to be vanilla. If you are blogging about uh, outside lighting, for example, and you believe in a certain way that things should be done or a certain manner that uh, uh, control should be handled or a certain product, you know, make sure that you are um, not being vanilla about it. Oh, if you wanted to do this, you could do that. No, this is how I suggest. This is what I tell you. This is how I believe it should be. Uh, I, I think there was a rap artist who, who said, um, if you don't stand up for something, if you don't stand for something, you've stood for nothing. So you need to take a point and you need to um, you need to be on point with that and not vanilla and trying to get everybody on side because somebody else said, no, it should be done this way or it should be done that way. So your conclusion should be you. It should be what you believe in, what you stand for, what you agree with uh, in your blog. And also, like every single form of marketing that we produce, you should have a call to action. There needs to be a call to action uh, for every single blog post that you create. OK, guys, uh, if you have any comments, suggestions or anything to pop in the box, now would be a good time to do so. Um, I'm going to have a quick look down here and then we're going to have a look at what that looks like in a in a structured blog. Um, OK, so Gary, I'm not going to read through all of those all of those comments at the moment. I know you've got quite a bit in there, but thank you very much. Uh, by the way, guys, if you're reading this, th th this post will disappear in approximately one hour. So I would suggest you get in and grab screenshots of the comments that Gary has made if uh, you want those to help you in your blog posts. Uh, is there a way of recording these? An app may not, maybe not just screenshots. Is there a way of recording these? An app, maybe not just screenshots. So do you mean the, uh, the live cast, John? Uh, if you're talking about recording the live casts, um, PM me later. I will give you some information on how you can actually how you can actually do that. Right. Let's take a look at how a uh, blog post should look, uh, or how they used to look for me. Uh, very simply, like this. The the platform I used was Word WordPress uh, to do my blogging. 
on WordPress, I was able to create the frame, if you like to call it, the um, the uh, image that I was trying to create that was familiar to people was consistent with this the the van on top the heading electricity and your home electricity and your home was the theme of my blog remember we, earlier we talked about themes so electricity and and your home was the theme of my blog the frame that you have there with the the blue and the van and down along the side where you have my image and a little information about me that was the same in every single blog post so the image there uh the frame created the structure created was the same so it kept it familiar every single time you read one of my blogs that is what you looked at that's what you saw so up next you see the headline which is a h1 tag uh, and the headline there is again the name of the blog it is the the title of the blog as a h1 tag next down we have the sub headline which is a h2 tag and uh breaks up the the post you'll see that and there's only a short amount of this blog in here but you'll see that there are on the screen two different sub headlines there are many more in the blog as you break down the blog so that it it breaks it visually for the individual reading it which makes it easier reading uh, it's also a good idea to make sure that the spacing in your text is good as well to make it a easier reading on uh, people reading it make sure the font size is a decent size uh, but also with the subheading, when you have it tagged as a H1, a H2 tag, it also helps with the the ranking as well. Uh, and then we have the body two, the body text, which is a H3 tag, and the body text um, is obviously the message that you are communicating. And in here, you should certainly have seeded some of the keywords uh, from that list of 25 that I was talking about so that you can uh, rank a lot higher for your blog and for your for your website so that's the basic structure very simple uh, not rocket science and like i said most of your platforms most of your web platforms have blogging built in you simply have to start using it so where do you get some ideas for your blogs um this is a uh relatively simple in terms of uh, coming up with ideas to blog on uh, one of the things you can do is make use of the information inside the toolbox because inside the toolbox you have a, uh, a bank of pre-written blogs I'm not saying take them and use them word for word take them rewrite them in your uh, language that suits your customer obviously put in your keywords that work for you but there's a way to start rather than looking at a blank page so th that's one resource for you the other resource is of course there are people out there who will write blogs for you uh, there are people connected with the toolbox who will write blogs for you also um, so sorry I don't know what's going on with my screen over here right so there are people connected with the toolbox who will write blogs for you as well uh, another source of information are your customers if your customer asks you a question or has a query about something that may be a good topic for a blog why because if one customer is curious about it then other customers may be interested in it as well another place we talk about from time to time is Google Alerts Google Alerts if you set up for regular alerts on your um, email you can get Google alerts on any topic that you want to search for so if you have search terms that you wish to blog on you can get Google alerts on that which will give you topics and information and again don't just take that information and regurgitate it take that information digest it synthesize it and then uh, rewrite it for your customers and if you're reusing stuff give credit to the places that it, is a, uh, it has come from uh, another thing that you can use is Google Trends. Google Trends is a facility where you can go and check what is trending on the web at the moment uh, and you can see what people are interested in and use search terms what's being searched for uh, what's getting the highest rankings what's what's what are people interested in uh, and that can give you some ideas for subjects and certainly for subject lines uh, for titles for your blogs. Uh, another thing that you can do is look for guest bloggers and inside our community here with the toolbox there are a number of different people who you could ask to guest blog whether they are experts in a particular area or whether they are other members 
of the toolbox who have written blogs already you could repurpose their content um, so that's asking people asking other electricians to guest blog for you uh, that can be helpful and of course uh, you can you could obviously guest blog for for other people and there's always a possibility that one or two of your customers might blog for you as well so there's a number of different places where you can come up with ideas and concepts to find blogging information so hopefully this morning as we get to the end of this um, if you have any questions guys pop them in the box I'm going to come to that